from Orlando, Florida. It's the Q covering ServiceNow Knowledge 17. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back. I'm Dave Vellante. This is Jeff Frick. Rajai Ranganathan is here. He's the Vice President of Cloud Services at Cognizant Technology Solutions. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. So, tell us about Cognizant and what you're doing to sort of support your clients' digital transformations. Let's start there. Yeah. So, Cognizant is a you know, leading uh, uh, digital technology outsourcing you know, provider. We help our clients to lead the digital. Okay, so basically customers are going through disruption, the digital disruption, and everybody is going through the digital transformation. So we help our clients to navigate the digital shift. So how we do that is via three pillars, right? We have, uh, you know, imagine a you know, front office, middle office, and a back office. Right? Front office is digital business. Our digital business unit helps our customers to innovate new products and solutions, you know, using data as a, new oil, new air, whatever you want to call it as. Then, the middle office, that is where getting into the enterprise, where touching the business processes. How do we create platforms to simplify and modernize those processes? And how do we create business process as a service? That's what we call it as a middle office. That's our digital operations you know, pillar. The third one is, how do I modernize the legacy technologies you know, into the, the latest uh, tuning towards digital, thereby providing agile and uh, you know, extensible, you know, things like that. So that's our digital systems and technology. So we address these three core pillars and the underlying platform for everything is cloud. That's where we see you know, products like such as ServiceNow plays a very critical role in, towards you know, fulfilling our customers' value. So what's your strategy with respect to ServiceNow and the partnership? If, I, if you look at uh, our partnership, uh, you know, back in 2008, you know, this is a, a small history to that. Um, see, we addressed the 14, you know, thousand enterprises. At the time, you know, the BMC and the HP, you know, those were all prevailing. It was pervasive with those, those days. Sure. Then we started hearing from the customers, hey, have you guys, do you guys know a company called ServiceNow? You know, that is where I think, hey, everybody's talking ServiceNow. So what is it all about? That is where we started our journey back in 2008. At that time, we put together, we took some, you know, the, the BMC and the HP guys, we reskilled them, trained them on ServiceNow, right? Started with about 10 people practice. Today we are 700 plus people practice, um, spread across uh, four uh, 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 delivery centers. And uh, the beauty is about out of the 700, 675 plus are certified in ServiceNow. So that is what the value people see that the certification skill set, the implementation, you know, the knowledge that we take into the customer, they see that as a value. And then how are you seeing the implementations evolve inside the customers once you go in um, and do an initial project? How, how is it evolving? We keep hearing about all these different um, application stacks and kind of service areas. What, what, what are you seeing in, in the yeah. field? If you, if you look at um, our customers, I think, you know, we also, uh, you know, the places where we have service now, most of them are, uh, you know, they are cognizant customers, you know, because we know their application, because we bring the domain knowledge and the application. Everyone starts with the basic thing, ITSM, you know, IT service management module. But because of the digital shift, they are going beyond the ITSM. So how, how they want to move from systems of records to systems of intelligence. Now we are going one level above, how do we create a systems of action with ServiceNow uh, workflows and automation and things like that. So today if you look at ITSM, yes, it's becoming commodity. That is where I think ServiceNow has really helped us, but customers want to use the power of the platform. How do I add customer service on top of it? How do I create you know, uh, HR module and uh, finance module and legal and facilities and use the power of platform? So this is how we see the implementation approach. They start with ITSM and then go through you know, module by module. But there are some customers where they say, hey, you know what? I have so many tools in the, in the ecosystem, but I want service now to be the, the fulcrum or manager of managers. So that is where we use the ServiceNow platform to integrate, uh, ServiceNow has got a lot of API integration you know, uh, mechanics. We use the integration, uh, API integration methodology and then uh, integrate various tools into a uh, provide a common, a single pane window. 
Is this allowing your customers to gain a competitive advantage or is it, is it cutting costs for them? I mean, what is, their, what is your customers for the business case than the business value? Is there differentiation yeah. that's inherent? Yeah, so traditional ITSM, I mean, if you take the legacy yeah. tools that used to exist compared to a service now based ITSM, we have seen customers you know, reducing call volumes by 30%, okay, just an average. Uh, incident, call, incident reduction, call reduction, etc. However, we are in the AI era. AI, artificial intelligence, you know, we have moved from mobile first to uh, artificial intelligence first. Artificial intelligence is no longer in the labs, it is, it is on the street. Customers are looking for how do we, you know, use artificial intelligence and machine learning to increase the service levels. So, that is why we call it as modernizing ITSM. That's what even ServiceNow says, that one of the customer conversation. In the modernization ITSM, how do you bring the artificial intelligence and machine learning, your 30% can go up to 40 to 50%, mm -hmm. right? And in the process, with conversational analytics, it makes, you know, gain a superior uh, end user experience. And how does Cognizant differentiate in the marketplace? Yes. That's a great question. Um, the key thing is uh, the people. I would say I would start with the people because any new technology, okay, whatever, you know, the robots are there, some, you need the human intellectual capital to implement that. So that is where we realized this problem earlier and we started in investing on the people. So we have something called a ServiceNow Academy where we constantly recruit people and reskill our own people to, to, to meet the needs of the ServiceNow. So the ServiceNow Academy, that is where constantly produces you know, people, number one. Number two, we have ServiceNow Labs. This is an investment from Cognizant, you call it a center of excellence, whatever the name you want to call. Um, the ServiceNow Labs is the biggest differentiator for, for our customers, where we constantly you know, produce you know, the best practices and we take, take those best practices you know, to the customer. The third one is, we constantly innovate. Innovation is very critical. So we used to do something called Hackathon. Uh, for the past three years, we have been doing Hackathon. A, a team from ServiceNow, they go all the way to our delivery centers in, in offshore. 4,000 people will be part of the Hackathon across different uh, locations over video conferencing, WebEx and things like that. Uh, recently we did uh, about three months back, 80, for 4,000 people participated, 80 plus innovation ideas came out. All these 80 plus innovation ideas, we go back to our customer, hey, you are in healthcare. This is something, you know, to, to track your ambulance, you know, for 911, et cetera. These are the things, ideas you can do that. So I would say constantly reskilling the people via our ServiceNow uh, Academy. The second thing is constantly producing best practices via our ServiceNow Labs. And the third one is, you know, so powering the innovation via hackathon. These three things really help us to, you know, take the value of service now to our customers. Excellent. All right, we got to wrap before the music starts. <laughs> Russ, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. And thank you, and it's a pleasure in talking to you guys. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap right after this short break. <laughs>